Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. Today is an absolutely monumental day for me because for the first time I can say that I'm doing this full time. Now that is a truly amazing thing for me to say and I really am quite proud that I have done it. But what I will also say is that there could not have been a worst week for me to start doing this and I will show you in this video exactly why. Now a lot of people would look at this and think this is basically heaven. That you get to play with corals all day, you get to have multiple tanks to have all these different types of fish and they don't fight and it's all, it's all brilliant. But although there are some major pitfalls in running a company like this, such as a power failure or if, if there's a, a, a contaminant in the system, I've done everything I can to try to mitigate those risks. There is, however, one risk which I haven't been able to mitigate and I haven't come across yet. And that is when the corals are shipped to me, there is a possibility they could die in shipping. Now, I recently ordered three boxes and three boxes costs thousands. It is probably the most significant gamble of my entire life because if these boxes die while it, during shipping, there is no, um, there's no DOA policy. Uh, it's just hard luck, basically. And um, I thought I, a, couple of, a couple of months ago, I did a big box of Acropora. Uh, I decided to do two boxes of Acropora this time, as well as um, some uh, LPS corals which I will show you in a minute. And unfortunately, I will show you the condition the Acropora came in. And as I said, there is nothing I can do about it. The other thing I'm gonna show you in this video, I have got a very unusual uh, new fish. Uh, it won't be unusual for me, for people who follow the channel for a while will know that this is a fish that I love, but it definitely will be a very unusual fish to have in a coral tray. So uh, I'm looking at him right now, uh, and uh, this is the first time I've seen him since he's gone in where he's come above the racks. So, but I'm so happy I got him. So uh, let's, uh, let me show you around. Now to give you some idea of what condition that acro box arrived in, this is the healthiest piece in that acro box, uh, which doesn't say very much. This is probably the second healthiest piece which arrived, uh, followed by a couple of these. Now the majority of the box looked like this. So I had to throw away probably at least 20 colonies. The ones which are in here now were ones which I had hoped might make a recovery. Uh, but as you can see from this piece here, uh, it isn't. So as soon as uh, they start getting algae around them, I know that basically it's over. Uh, so these two pieces, the only reason I've left them in here was to show you for this video. These two pieces obviously won't recover. Um, and there's another piece over here where it's sort of half, half and half at the moment. So, now as you can see it's a very similar story with the corals in the bottom tray as well. Some of them will recover, uh, it probably will take them a few months, but some of them are clearly dead. So I think I lost about probably 75% of that box. So if anyone thinks that this is the ideal job for them still, basically you have to be willing to gamble thousands of pounds and hope that the corals come in alive. Now, now, if hearing that hasn't put you off, if knowing that you can spend thousands of pounds and get a box of essentially coral skeletons, uh, if that hasn't put you off, then maybe, just maybe, you are ready to start your own coral farm. So, as I said, this is part of what happens sometimes. Shops will have been living with this for years, whether it's corals or fish. Uh, it just so happens that it has come at a bad time for me. But, you know, to be in this hobby, you have to be pretty thick skinned. Uh, over the last 14 years of doing it, uh, I've been through multiple um, issues which I've had to deal with. And, um, and uh, you know, you just, you dust yourself off, you feel bad for a day, a couple of days you feel bad, uh, and then you dust yourself off and, and you keep going. And um, there were some really, really nice corals in that shipment, which I will show you in a second. Um, but I just thought I'd get through the bad news first. Um, and although, as I said, although I lost most of the corals, uh, there, is, there is a couple of gems in there. There's one which I really like, I'll show you now. Now this is the piece which I absolutely love. It's kind of, it's a little bit blue with the tips and it's sort of green around the edge. 
Um, and there's another piece, which I've actually had this piece for a while, but it came in on the last mystery box, and it's just started to colour up. Um, but this is the reason which I do it, where I, I order mystery boxes, because it's just as exciting every time, whether it's my first mystery box or my tenth mystery box, that uh, you, never, you never know what you're going to get, and every time you usually get something which is, uh, which is a little bit different, which is exciting for you. So, um, so yeah, let me show you uh, System 2 now. Right now, before I show you System 2, I will probably finish off uh, System 1 first. Now, this is the most difficult tank to film because, as you can see, there's quite a lot of glare on it. Um, there are a couple of changes in, in this system. So I've got a couple of to uh, toadstool corals, uh, which I got from uh, someone who follows the channel, uh, who sent me an email off asking if I wanted to uh, swap any corals with him. Um, and the other thing I've done is I have fragged some of the Xenia. So before, the Xenia was going all the way up the wall. Uh, but as you can see, it's not doing that anymore. Uh, and I've also fragged some of, some of this uh, and then put in new tiles for it to, uh, to grow over. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's the most of the system of, uh, of this tank. Uh, it does have a couple of rats in there. Unfortunately, one of the rats jumped out, so it now has a, uh, a net on top. Now, the biggest issue that I currently face is how to cover all of these tanks uh, with nets. Now I'm not sure what the best way to do this will be because as you can see it's quite a large surface area uh, to cover. Now I have had a quote, uh, it did come back quite expensive. Now it wasn't expensive for what you get, it's just ex it will be expensive to have this done properly where you, where you get it coated, uh, covered in like proper plastic panels. Um, and obviously I understand why it would cost a lot of money and that's because there is, there's obviously a lot of work involved, but ideally I'd like to come up with some solution, uh, if anyone can think of one. What I would like is to have some sort of, uh, like a rolling mechanism at the back where I can literally just pull the net over all the way and then hook it down the other end. Now, if that's possible, I don't know. If anyone knows how to do that, uh, then obviously let me know. Uh, because obviously I have a, a significant amount of tanks to cover. And it's important to me that uh, the fish are safe in here as well. So, um, so yeah, that's that's the that's the biggest issue that I currently have. Um, things are pretty much as usual in Coral Tray uh, One. Uh, there isn't a lot of change in here. The biggest change is that I have moved the acans, which were over here originally, um, and it's it's so that it can allow me to clear out some of the SPS tray above. So the ACANs I'll show you in a minute, they're in the other tank and they have been replaced by uh, the Tropic Thunder uh, Montipora, uh, which was huge if you saw in the last video. Uh, and then gradually what I will do, I will move uh, anything like this, any of the, um, the LPS corals will gradually be moved out. You see I've done a lot of frags of some uh, different types of cephastrias and things like that. Um, these will all be moved out as soon as possible uh, into the next system and then uh, eventually this this tank will be all uh, SPS corals. I just need to get rid of all of uh, all of these euphilias. <laughs> so as you can see the euphilia garden is definitely shrinking because at one point it took over half the tank uh, and now it's just down to uh, this smaller section. Now the biggest change to show you uh, in, compared to, in this video compared to the last video is that this tank had no corals in it at all. In fact, the lights weren't even on in this system. And as you can see, I've now currently got five. The reason only five are on is because I was in the roof the other day and I obviously knocked a power pack and the fifth one now isn't on and I don't wanna go back into the roof. So uh, I will have to go back into the roof probably uh, this week, uh, but it can wait because there's no corals underneath it. So I'll give you a little, a little tour of the corals that are in that tray. These are the ones that, uh, as I said, a lot of these came in uh, this week. All, and, uh, and there's a couple that I've moved from here. And then once I've done that, I will show you the other tray. And then, as I said, I will show you the very unusual fish, uh, which once again, I, think, I don't think I'll have any trouble showing you because he's now currently swimming around in front of me. And the fact I have said uh, he's an unusual fish and he's swimming around in front of me. Uh, and if you know who I am, you probably can guess what this fish is. And if you, if you want to put a comment in the uh, comment section below, now, what you think that fish will be, and then you can see if you are right at the end of the video. Uh, but you can see like the big smile I got my, on my face just looking at him. So uh, that should give you a clue.
Right, now this is actually Coral Tray 4. Now, although it should have been Coral Tray 3, and to most people it would be irrelevant, uh, when I set up the Radions and the MP40s, uh, they were set up as Coral Tray 4. Uh, there is a system in place where that, that cor that's Coral Tray 1, that's Coral Tray 2, and then this is meant to be 3, 4, and then over there is 5 and 6. Uh, and the reason I did that is to make it easy to use and the fact that these were installed the wrong way around uh, drives my OCD crazy. So it gives you a little bit of insider knowledge uh, but uh, it doesn't, the day-to-day -day runnings, it doesn't really matter but it's just something which it will probably forever annoy me. So as you can see the trachophilia are now out. Uh, originally they were not on show properly, they were sort of tucked in between the frag racks uh, in Coral, tra Coral Tray 2. Uh, but it gives you uh, a chance to see them properly and in their, all their, their, their full glory. Uh, I also have done quite a lot of frags since the last video. Uh, now these were frags a little while ago, so as you can see, uh, they have had a chance to heal. Uh, there's some pieces here I absolutely love. I really, really love the, uh, the pink coloration uh, on this. Um, and then the euphilia all, all came in at the same time as the acro boxes because as I said I did two acro boxes and one of LPS corals and uh, as you can see I think these torches will be popular uh, all this stuff as I said is on the website at the moment uh, the sophastrias always have a fit every time I frag them or do anything with them uh, but some of these are really really nice I really like this is a, uh, a bling bling sophastria and the coloration if you can't see it properly with the, uh, the purple and green is really nice uh, and this is the Lepto, uh, Leptoceris, which was getting out of control in my other tank. Uh, the other thing which would take up a lot of space in the other tank uh, were some Alveoporas, which as you can see over here, this is the, the green one, uh, which on the website just is a green Alveopora, and then this is the dark green Alveopora. Uh, I actually think I prefer the dark green one to the green one, because it's got that sort of, just the, the colour contrast. And, um, and then, as you can see, I have a whole range of Akens. Um, some of these, one of these is I really, really like, which are the, these ones. I don't know how well to speak up on the camera, uh, but they have like a highlighter pink coloration around the center, which I've never seen before. Um, some of the other Akens are just sort of normal ones, uh, sort of just the reds. And then there's obviously a few nicer, like these green, green and blue ones. Uh, and I think that is it for this tray, other than uh, there's some Galaxia over there. And the thing I almost forgot to show you is the, uh, these were the other Euphilia which turned up at uh, the same time as the torches. So I've got some rose gold hammers, uh, some orange uh, frog spawns that I've not actually seen before, uh, some lighter green frog spawns, uh, the, and then I've got, this is a real show-stopping piece with, uh, with sort of the pink and gold. I've got the gold hammers, and then I've got these bright green. These are like luminous, the brightest green hammers I've ever seen, I think. Um, and yeah, and I got, I got a couple of unusual pieces as well, um, which are, they look like Hollywood stunner chalices, but they're different coloration. They're sort of bluey more than green. So I'll probably try and grow those out. And then I was told that these are Indonesian lobophilia. Uh, and then Coral Tray 6, which is the last one to show you, uh, is just full of Xenia at the moment. Now, the reason it's full of Xenia is because people buy Xenia. So if people buy Xenia, I'm going to start growing it on a much larger scale. So, um, now, recently I've been thinking of ideas, uh, interesting ideas, something that's a bit different uh, to try to breathe some new life into the channel. Because as you know, I've been obviously intermittently away. Uh, and I thought of an idea the other day. Now. Some of you will remember, if you watched the channel for a while, that I once swapped a gem tank for some coral. Essentially, mean, which meant I got the gem tank for free uh, because obviously I grew the coral myself. Now, I thought I would start that process again, but film each stage. Now, I was thinking for a while what coral would be good to start that process with, and I thought that Xenia would be the best place to start. Now the reason I uh, thought Xenia would be a good place to start was because I was actually given the Xenia. Uh, well, I wasn't given it, it came as like a hitchhiker on another coral I bought. So I thought that what I could do, I could go from you getting a free coral 
and turning it into a black tang. Uh, I've always wanted a black tang. Black tangs are, as, are notoriously expensive. Um, I haven't actually seen one for a while, so I couldn't even tell you what price they are. But the, I just thought it would be an interesting process to show you each step of the way. So what I will do, I will start with one Xenia frag, just one. And I will keep that, that frag separate from the rest of them. And then I will trade that frag with other people. If anyone wants a Xenia frag for a different piece of coral, it could be green star polyps or something, or a Zoa or something more interesting. And I'm going to try to trade my way up to a black tang. Now, I don't know how long this process will take. Obviously, in theory, the longer I keep the Xenia frag, the, the, the more it will grow which means I can in, then, in theory, split it. There's no rules against doing that. So if I, if I, buy, if I trade some zoas and they grow, I can then split those into two different things. And I'm gonna see how much coral I can accumulate without actually buying any coral. And eventually what will probably happen is I will trade that coral in with a fish shop for a black tang. Because generally, people who have black tangs usually wanna keep them. So it's probably not gonna be that easy to find someone that will trade with me for a black tang but I will probably be able to trade with a shop for a black tag if it's a huge bunch of coral. Now, what I will end up doing probably is keeping that coral in the, in the bottom tray to keep it separate from the rest, and I will document, uh, document each stage of that process. So, as I said, if anyone has anything interesting that they would like to trade a Xenia frag floor for, <laughs> I, uh, which I know is to some extent will be a difficult ask, uh, I will see if I can trade my way up to a black tang. If I can do it, I don't know. But, uh, and how long, it, I think I can do it. How long it will take, I have no idea. So, um, so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's, I thought that would be an interesting, fun thing to do. Uh, right now, as I said, I will show you the, the, the unusual fish, probably the fish that no one else would ever put in a coral tray. Uh, and uh, I'll show you him right now. And, um, cause I've just found him. Right, now this is the newest addition to the Prestige Reef Coral Farm. As I said, uh, this, this is Pablo 2.0, uh, who will from now on be known just as Pablo. Now I have to be really careful whenever I show uh, fish on the channel because I, all of a sudden I get inundated with messages from people saying, uh, I saw the fish on your channel and I went and bought one. Uh, these do not make good pets for the home aquarium. It is a little bit hypocritical of me having one. Uh, I have had one previously, which I had for about seven years. They do take a little bit of extra work, a little bit of extra care and attention. Um, and what I will say is the last one I had died, as I said, after about seven years, but it died probably about a year and a half ago. Now, in that time, I probably would have seen about 30 of them in fish shops and I didn't buy them. And there is a reason for that. As I said, they have a very, very incredibly poor survival rate. Uh, the reason I picked up this one is because this one has been in a home aquarium. Uh, it came from a fellow reefer. Uh, whenever there's difficult fish, things like the convict tang, uh, powder blue tang, the box fish, these fish which are notoriously difficult to keep, I always like to wait and find a second hand one so that um, where it's been in, an aquarium for a long period of time. The copper bands as well. You'll notice that a lot of my fish come from other people. Uh, and that's because when they've been with other people, those people took the risk with these risky fish, uh, which means, so your chance of, of success is much, much higher by doing it this way. So um, he's gone now, he's under the rack somewhere. So I won't be able to show you him again, uh, but yeah. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy watching the video. Please feel free to comment below if you have any questions uh, and obviously click that like button. It makes a massive difference, as I said in the last video. Um, if, you, if you do these, these small things for me, it keeps the channel ticking over until I'm ready to, to fully embrace it again. Um, and yeah, so uh, have a good week and I will see you, uh, I'll see you next time.